Isaiah chapter 4. King James will not do this well. But let's read King James. In that day, seven will men shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread, we will wear our own apparel, only let us be called by your name to take away our reproach. Message version. Message version. Who went to verse 2? I said message version. Thank you. That will be the day when seven men will gang up on one man, saying, we will take care of ourselves. We will get our own food and our clothes. Just give us a child. Make us pregnant. So we will have something to live for. You can see Isaiah has something to say, right? Amplified version. Say, just get us pregnant. Or just... Amplified version. In that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own food, We will eat our own food and wear and provide our own clothes. Only let us be called by your name. Take away our shame of being unmarried. Did you see that? So, so it says in that day, seven women. So that tells me that the way the population is increasing now. Are we having more unmarried men or more unmarried women? More unmarried women, right? Okay. So there's this prophecy. Huh? Um, uh, Caused by more unmarried men. Okay. But this is Isaiah's prophecy. That the day is coming on the earth. And it was a prophecy. That seven women. They will just get annoyed. Of their single status. Ah. They can't. Before it used to be one man. To one woman. And this ones ah, They went paranoid. They said no. Even if we are seven. We don't care. Seven girls on one guy. We will die there. <laughs> Whatever is happening now was prophesied in the Bible. It said in that day, seven women. And he said, it's not that they will go and toast them. They will take hold of their garment. They will hold them. And say, no. This is a journey of... Um, anybody who can win this battle will win this battle. But I don't care. I said, but I'm in a relationship... I don't care. I said, I'm married. Forget that one. You're married. Are you happy? <laughs> I'm a Christian. Forget. I'm also a sister. <laughs> so seven women, no shame. Erica Badu generation, no shame. They will hold a woman by the skirt. And they will say, this is our negotiation. And I want to talk about negotiation. This is our negotiation. We've got money. We've been working. So don't think it's because of your money we want to marry you. We are making money. We'll pay house rent. Pay for food. In case we can see that you're not doing too well. We'll pay for your food. We'll pay for the house. We'll buy clothes. The only thing we want is that just marry us. Just give us your name. And take us from the reproach of being unmarried. Ah, when I saw that scripture, I laughed. I said, You mean this kind of scenario exists in the Bible? So I know another pastor will tell you that what this means is that in the last days, the seven unbelievers will run after a righteous man. And they will say to you, Show us the way of the Lord. So that we might do the things that you say. That's under translation. Uh, but they, me, I've read three translations now. I didn't see unbelievers and unrighteous. Sometimes you just have to be simple about how to. Don't try to interpret what God has not interpreted. When the Bible says, if the righteous, if the foundation be broken, what shall the righteous word do? Christians have had a way to finish that proverb that God didn't finish. Say, if the foundation be broken, what shall the righteous They say, there's nothing the righteous can do. Who told you? The person that started the proverb, he didn't finish it, he stopped. Because there's no answer, then you decided to continue and say there's nothing the righteous can do. Who told you? There's nothing he can do. Grace can do anything for him. So the seven women said, We'll follow after one man, and we've got everything that we need. And the first point I want to bring out from that scripture is the principle of negotiation. 
for every, I mean, you may think that what was happening there was just overdone, was overboard or something. No, that's not what was going on. What was going on is that this girl saw this guy. I like this guy and I love to just express my mind. Excuse me, is there anything wrong with a girl telling a guy how she feels? Is there anything wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it. She was bold. Guy, I like you. I've got money. But she wasn't forcing the guy. And she wasn't, it wasn't a force. The issue was that she was negotiating in case you don't like it. It's not a force, you can go. But she was showing some level of doggedness and tenacity. I mean, in the Bible, you could find out that even Ruth helped Boaz to speak. Amen. There are some men, they have something in their heart, but they will never talk. But you know they love you. I'll tell you something about the random and regular guys from that scripture. And why that woman had to behave that way. So she said, this is our own proposition though. We are negotiating. What do you think about it, this guy? Because every relationship is a transaction. And if you do not approach it with a negotiation mind you are going to have a problem with it. So many people have gotten themselves into relationships and marriages and they said that we never banked for what we saw. Or you're asking yourself, how did we get here? How did it get to the point where we are fighting every day? How did it get to the point where we enter into physical abuse? How did it get to the point where it's verbal abuse every day? I cancelled somebody and I said to myself, my God, I never believed this can ever happen to this person in my life. I just never believed this could happen to that person. And I was shocked. For some, it's medical negotiation. All kinds of some things we overlook. And it's in business. What you don't negotiate properly, whatever becomes your benefit, you receive it with a good heart. You cannot come back after a negotiation and say, sorry, I misnegotiated. There's nothing like that. Please, can we renegotiate? No, there's nothing like that. Once you stamp it, and marriage is a way to legally say that what we have negotiated is final. So the moment you get into that, your negotiation is fine. And one of, one of my concerns is that how come a lot of people who are not married, they are excited to get married. They are excited. The way they are running. The people who are in marriage, they are saying this thing is overhyped. They are not even excited. Because in marriage, it's not the excitement. Are you living by excitement in marriage? We live by commitment. It's different. It's commitment. It's not like it's when you are not married that your, your hormones will be running as if they don't have direction. That's running anyhow. Running, you can do like a mumu for anybody, do anything. The way you're, you are wired at that point, you are not okay. There's a measure of insanity in your brain. You can do what you normally would not do for the girl. You can cut a grenade. <laughs> you see a young man who naturally is principled, you know, who doesn't do some things. When I, when I was going to look for my wife in the office, myself and somebody in this church, <laughs> we were going in the car. At that time, I didn't know that route. In fact, my wife opened my life to that. I didn't, there are some places in my life that I don't think I would ever go to. Ajuan, Akute, Ojodubega. Now I know those places very well. One day I was going, myself and this guy were going in one overheating Siena car. We, we stopped like 15 times. My wife, you know that car. We stopped like 15 times on the road. You know, when the car will stop, we'll cough. We wait, we bless God. For some coal to come upon, we pour water, we anoint it, we continue the journey. You know, we did that. We now spent, you know, that beggar round about old up. That old up is demonic. And your car is overheating. Everybody passing on the road, they are just blessing you with their hands, giving you high five like this on the road. I stopped in the car. I said, you know what? You come with the car. I will take a bike. In my, see, in my life. People know me. I will stop and take a bike. So, but those are the things we do for love. <laughs> I, I got there. My wife said, "What's the time?" 
She did like this. What's the time? You know, because you know there's something you're looking for, you calm down. Everything in my vein was standing up. I, are you okay? Do you know what I went through to get here? I even took a bite. I mean, she didn't even ask me, what's the time? Just, I was 15 minutes late, 15 minutes. Me that you can come to my office, you can wait for me 30, 30 minutes. I won't apologize. And she forgot that when she comes to my, before we started dating, when she's looking for me, she can stay one hour and not see me in the reception. And she won't feel anything. And she, after that one hour, she will come in and say, I, I'm sorry, I, I know you have a lot of things to do, but I, I just, I, I thank you for this opportunity. She will wait one hour. So she did like this. Ah, I humbled myself. I said, I'm sorry. You better be. <laughs> I'm her pastor. She will come to church on Sunday. She will hear the word of God. If I say stand to your, she will stand to her. Say, lift up your, you lift up your hand. But the moment you are out of church, so you want to do anything at that point, to please the person. But negotiation is very important. Before you get into any deal, negotiate what you are going into. If, you, if what you are negotiating is not what you want, get off the deal. Once a deal is signed, it is signed. Many people have gotten into deals now that you are asking yourself, how did I get into this kind of deal? There are many people who are married, but they are just flatmates. They are living together. They are not enjoying marriage. The husband lives in one room. The wife lives in the other room. They only come together to pray in the sitting room, watch TV in the night. Everybody returns back to their room. That's what you negotiated for. I grew up seeing my parents like that. And they are not fighting, no. As in they are normal. They are okay. But they have two different rooms. When I asked my mother, I said, my load is too much. He can't accommodate my load in, this, in the room or something. And, and my father said no, that I want a place that is sane. I don't, I, you know, so they had two rooms. When they asked them, because what if you are living in a one-room apartment? How will you do it? Because there are some things we allow and the devil just plays on our intelligence. Negotiating. Because marriage is when you now begin to reinforce your negotiations. So, for the married people, you're talking about your negotiation. No, for the unmarried singles, you're talking about your negotiation. For the married people, you're talking about reinforcement of negotiation. That's what we're doing every day. Reinforcing the negotiations. Come, this is our deal. This is what we came together. With. So, we need to maintain this. We want to maintain that. We have to do this. We have to do that. Negotiation. As a guy, you met a girl. All you wanted was beauty. You just wanted a fine girl. That when you walk with her on the road, people will admire your girlfriend or your wife. That's what you are negotiating for when you were toasting her. Now you are married. You are married. You are, she, you are saying, please, can I have some more to eat? And she's telling you, I, I, I just did manicure and pedicure. I can't cook. When you were wooing the girl, did you find out if she could cook or not? It would be wicked because if she doesn't know how to cook, and at that point, you are not saying, what, what do you know? I say, girl, what do you know? All you know is to do beauty. Is that what you signed for? There are some people that, see, say, I can't cook. I'm, la I'm a lazy girl. I'm lazy. I can't cook. But if you want beautiful girl, I you can use me as a showbiz for your friend. Take me out to parties. Take me out on the road. When we are going on the road, people just be looking at us. I will cause an attraction for our family. Some people, that's the purpose that they, you are laughing, I'm telling you. That's the purpose. So, I, I can't, I, I, I can't deal with raising children, get four nannies, one to take care of me, three for the children. I cannot stress myself. So, when, so, you see a guy now who is not very okay, now toasting a girl who is very okay, and you don't negotiate completely. You're not negotiating completely, and the girl tells you, are you going to change the way she has been wired up? I mean, I used to have a vice chancellor university who told me that she told her husband day one, you will really not find me cooking. And the guy said, I don't mind. He said, I'm not marrying you because I wanted to cook. Of oh, blessed memory now. I'm, I'm marrying you because of other things. That's negotiation. 
So when you go to the house and you see the chef cooking, and you now be saying, this woman says she's lazy, she, it's not your business. That's what they signed in for. Why are you now calling for something you didn't negotiate for before marriage? There are some people, you see, the way their hands, the way the girl's hand is, the way the nails are, you know, she doesn't want anything to come near. So, sorry. I, I can't get pregnant. Say, so why? Do you have any complication? No. I want to look slim, sleek for you. I don't want anything to affect our body shape. Can we adopt? Then you know, say, is anything wrong with you medically? Say, no. <laughs> Me, I am okay medically. Why should we adopt? The girl said, I cannot change my... You see, the moment I have a child, my body shape changes. You are laughing, but you know that happens. It happens. Not everybody wants to get pregnant. So in case it's fine girl that you're looking for, or fine boy that has a range over. On Thursday, I was talking about the girl who bought a range spot for the side chick. I won't tell you that story. You need to get the tape. So you saw a guy. What you saw is money. We die on this one. So, are you in a relationship? Yes. Serious relationship? Yes. But are you, do you guys have plans? We're on it. Then you hang around. You saw money. You went to his house. Immediately, in the twinkle of an eye, in one minute, all the property existing in your family. <laughs> you just saw it just fade off. And you saw the hand of God bring you to prosperity. In one minute, when they went to bring wine, and before you returned back from the wine, you have caught visions of heaven. You didn't, you didn't know, you didn't take time out to check. When this boy gets angry, how does he behave? You didn't know. Are you a Christian? Yes, I go to church. You don't even know the name of the church. Say, so I go to church. Say, so I was church today. Say, fine. Don't know whether it's a cultic meeting. He said, no. Because if you know the meaning of the church, you, you understand when somebody says yes. You don't know where he went to. Then one day people are talking. They are just talking. And he says, can you get me water? And he says, I'm tired. And the guy looks at him. Are you crazy? Are you mad? And you're, and you're like, calm down. Are you okay? Because you've never, you don't expect him to be like that. So are you okay? The moment you said, are you okay? Said, you are asking me. And he gives you two slaps. And you cannot imagine that that could ever happen. Before you enter any deal, negotiate properly. What's your idea about religion? Are you somebody who believes, no problem, you go Catholic, I mean, I go to my own uh, Pentiraska. Anyway, so you go your own, I go our own. See, if those things are not clear, are you getting me? And you, I, I used to be in Catholic. And when we're in Catholic, we think Pentecostal people are funny set of people. How can people just go to church and be making noise? When the Holy, when the Holy Spirit is moving, you're supposed to be in a, in a calm environment. You don't even talk. You reverence his presence. You keep quiet. Then when they tell you to talk, you talk. Hail Mary, mother of Jesus, pray for us today. You know, you, we can be in church eh, for 30 minutes. We won't say anything. And somebody is talking to us. The prayers we want to pray, they have written it for us. We pray out our prayers. It was well meditated on. It's not as the spirit leads. You will pray now. Rakatakata. And if a Catholic enters, you say, what, what, what are they doing here? So you can have a clash. So do you agree that, okay, after marriage, for you that you're a girl, you're a very, very um, active person in a Pentecostal setting, and you're your husband-to-be is in a Catholic setting or is in an Anglican setting, as the case may be. You know, have you been able to negotiate that, okay, are we going to look for, what kind of church do you think we should go to? Or the guy said, oh, of course, let's go to Catholic. He said, okay, you can ask yourself, can you function in a Catholic place? If you cannot, you ask yourself. He said, because if you tell yourself, I want to buy a red car, red, red, red. Lord, red car. Lord, red car. You tell your friends, if you see any red car, please just organize a red car for me. A red car can be a guy or a girl. Just get a red car for me. Then one day you enter the garage and you saw a red car without tire and you bought it. Or they said, this red car is very good but the engine is misfiring. And you carried your money and you paid for the red car. Whatever you find in the red car, you will take like that. 
Because once you are married, whatever you negotiated for, you have to live by it. You cannot throw the man out. You cannot throw the woman out. You have to learn wisdom on how to deal with it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So it's important. So on religion, how do we don't just say we are both Christians. He's a Christian. I'm a Christian. Praise the Lord. That's all. Don't just gloss over things like that. Accurate details. Sometimes I say, oh, Pastor, what you are saying? Don't you know it's just God? It's just God that brings a good mind. It's just God. These things don't matter. He said, You do you do the one that you can do. Then let God do the ones that He can do. The one that has to do with the heart that you can't know. Discuss it. Financial issues. I, mean, I don't like saving, no. Let me just tell you now. I don't like saving. Or a man who every money you, he gives you, he wants you to return back with a breakdown. When I first got married, I told my wife, I said, where's the money for food? I said, I didn't see breakdown of last month. It's my wiring. I'm just wired that. Just give me feedback. Ah, my wife went annoyed. Yeah, I can talk freely. You know, this is the time I like to talk freely. <laughs> I can't, I'm, I'm myself. I'm not looking at anybody's face. You know. When I get home, I'll get good food, nothing. They burn anybody. Well, you send this message to her. I said, feedback. He said, no. In the house, they, they don't do that, those kind of things. Ah. You don't do that kind of thing? In this, my head, I did cost account. I did financial account that I struggled to pass. You won't give me feedback? So, but those things are important. Those things can cause trouble. You can be both Christians and not believe in tithing. So why are you always carrying your money to church? Hey, you just get carry on. You got put it in the house. Always carry your money to the country. I, I don't believe in it. Henceforth, don't go to that church again. No, that's the truth. You can marry somebody who does not believe in giving. I so said, you're just wasting money. It's just, let's forget about it. Let's, let's stay at home. Watch TBN. They used to take worship 30 minutes between 4 and 5. They will not listen to a message 5 and 6. And we have, we have gone to church. Let's start doing e-church. But you've got to negotiate properly. I will never forget the story of this person who got married and at the end of the day found out that one of them is got hepatitis. Because when they did the blood, um, when they did their test in the hospital, they just did the normal one. They didn't do certain tests. So it didn't reveal certain things that they didn't know. So what they saw was just some little infection and, and that's normal, you know. But ladies, you can always get infection anywhere, you know. So you just, you, that, that's curable. That can be dealt with. They got married. They signed the papers. In the evening, they saw hepatitis B. The girl's got to go take about 64 injection to be seen. To have sex with the husband. And the guy never told the girl that I had this in my body. He even denied that he didn't know. How can you have hepatitis? He said, you don't know. And people can be wicked. And of course, I told the girl, any marriage that comes on the platform of lie is no marriage. You can walk out. Because if somebody lies to marry you, and you can verify that it's a lie, the Bible says it in 1 Corinthians 6, it is not a marriage. You can walk out. Except you think you can walk it out with the person. Then you will not complain. Get back to Eden,